Matakiape. My name is Kevin Meager, um, and I'm here at the Ochechi Shikoin uh, camp uh, near Standing Rock, and we're here to stop the DAPO pipeline um, from being drilled under the Missouri River north of the Standing Rock Reservation and Cheyenne River Sioux Reservation. Um, I'm Hesca Lakota, unenrolled. My grandfather was from Cherry Creek, South Dakota, and also Milesville, South Dakota. Um, my hunka father was a well-known medicine man from Cheyenne River. Hunka is one of our five ceremonies. It's an adoption ceremony, and I was adopted by him. I was his ceremonial helper for seven years. And then uh, on my mother's side, I'm descended from the Montana Matee people. Um, one I, what I want to share with you today is uh, what's going on here and explain to you in a larger context, more clear way of what's happening. So. 15 years ago, my Hunka father, who's Lakota, told me this. It was we were about to enter the war in Afghanistan. And I asked him, I said, why is America going over there? And he said to me, they're going over there to kill the little devils first, and then they're coming after the big devils. It's interesting. But first, let me explain what a Wachashua Khan is, a holy man among the Lakota. A Wachashua Khan is a person who has gone on top of a hill to seek a vision. It's called humblecha, crying for a vision. They could train their entire life to become a medicine person, but only the Creator and the Dukashlele, the angelic beings that have been placed over our tribe, the Lakota people, are able to authorize someone as a holy man. They select those individuals as a servant to them. In the process, if they are selected, they open their eyes and their ears. That is, they're able to see the Tunkash Lele, the angelic beings that are messengers for the Creator to our people, and they can also hear them. So understanding that, taking that in hand, I'll go back to what I'm saying about the little devils. So he said, first they're going to go after the little devils, then they're going to come after the Lakota. I didn't understand what he meant. So I said, what do you mean? And he said, the big devils are these evil white families that control Europe and America. And the little devils are these dictators who are their servants. That they keep on short leashes like dogs. But as dogs do, every now and then they run off and do their own thing and they can't control them. And the big devils, these white families, have decided to assert their control over the entire planet now. But to do that, they want to get rid of all their competition, which is the little devils, the ones they may not be able to control. And then after they're done with them, they're going to come after the Lakota. Well, why the Lakota, a tribe in the middle of nowhere, North Dakota and South Dakota? My dad told me the only thing that terrifies these families is the calf pipe, the Chanupa, that was given to the Lakota people many thousands of years ago. It's the only thing they cannot control. What the Chinupa is, it's an object that was made by the Creator Himself with His own hands in the spirit world. And He sent it over to the people via a messenger called White Buffalo Calf Woman. It's a device in which people can communicate to the Creator with their own Chinupas that are connected to the main calf pipe. In between Unchi Maka, that is Mother Earth, and the Creator, there are many planes of existence. So when a Christian, a Zoroastrian, a Jew, a Muslim prays, their prayers must work their way up through those planes of existence to get to the Creator. But the Chinupa cuts through all of that. As soon as you fill that pipe and pray, and the smoke comes out, the Tukashlele, the angelic beings, take your message directly to the Creator through all those planes. It is the only sacred object on earth. And the reason these evil white families want to control the Lakota and make us submit is because it's the only device on earth that can stop them from asserting their authority over the entire planet. So how do you assert authority over someone? You take away their most basic need to survive. In the 1800s, the white man came here, the American leaders, and they killed off all the buffalo, forced us into starvation, and forced us to submit. Now they're coming to pollute our water so they'll finally have to submit to their will and authority. Going back to the little devils, it's just as my dad said. 
Since 2001, they have taken out the Taliban, Saddam Hussein, Hosni Mubarak, the Muslim Brotherhood, the dictator of Tunisia, Muammar Gaddafi, Assad, they're trying, and now they're trying to take out the Ira Iranian clerical leadership. Now that they're almost done, they're turning to the Lakota. Okay, so going back to asserting authority. They have a secondary benefit here with the pipeline. They're going to make a lot of money off it. But they had a secondary benefit taking out Saddam Hussein too. But their stated intent was to kill him or remove him from power. They said it. But they also robbed the treasury. They stole antiquities. They tried new warfare methods. They tried new warfare products. They studied the genetic damage on children from depleted uranium. That was all secondary benefits, but their main intent was to kill Saddam Hussein. The same is true here. They're going to make a lot of money off the pipeline. And eventually, towards the end, when all that oil is almost taken out, they're going to bust that pipeline. Beginning here at Standing Rock, for 200 miles down is the Standing Rock Reservation and the Cheyenne River Reservation. They're basically one giant reservation that's contiguous that the white man drew a line through for administrative purposes. And on the west side of the Missouri, for over those 200 miles, it's only reservation land. On the east side is sparse, sparsely populated white settlements. And the only town of any size beyond that is the town of Pier, which is maybe 70, 80 miles south of Cheyenne River, it has 20,000 people. And even that can be sacrificed. So when they do bust the pipeline, it's going to destroy all of our drinking water, all of the water we use to irrigate our crops, and the water we use to take care of our cattle and feed them. We're finally going to have to submit to their authority. And then they might make a move on the Chinupa. Uh, let me say this about the pipe real quick. I ask you to not bother the family that is the keeper of this device, this artifact, the calf pipe. Please leave them alone. I know many of you are interested in our ways, but leave these human beings alone so that they can take care of this object and live in peace and quiet. Also, don't go buy a Chinupa. Don't seek to purchase one. When someone receives a Chinupa, they have to go through a process of being assessed by their elders and a medicine person. Sometimes. The Tukashile themselves can authorize the person through dreams or vision, but still a medicine person verifies it. And then you go into a ceremony and the creator activates it. So if you're someone that's not mentally or emotionally balanced, that have anger issues, you can hurt yourself with this device. It's that powerful because it's only used for peace. You've probably seen pictures of old Plains Indians holding them. Well, the reason the white man called it the peace pipe is because after every treaty, the Indians would fill it, and then they would smoke it. And they would say to the Creator, I promise never to break this treaty as long as the white man does it. It was a ceremony sealing the treaty, the most powerful signing that you can do. But the white man never understood that. Okay. So coming back to what's going on here on the reservation and the threat that's posed to the people on Standing Rock and Cheyenne River. We have a lot of people that have come here. A lot of them have very good intentions, but some of them are here for other reasons than stopping the pipeline. What they don't understand, and yes, it is a global issue, but at the base of it, it's about the survival of the Lakota people on Standing Rock and Cheyenne River. When I was little, my parents lived in another state, and I heard many of these old Indian stories. Things were taught to me. When I moved back to the reservation, I had a lot of love and kindness shown to me. A lot of good stories, a lot of culture. And I look at the little ones and I don't want them to not have that. I want them to be able to enjoy all those things that I gotta enjoy too, all those good things. I don't want them to get leukemia and cancer and have seizures. And this is what happens when waterways get destroyed by this highly toxic crude. Also, my understanding is that no matter what, 
it's going to leak oil. My understanding is that the steel in these pipelines are so subpar that it leaks all the time before the bells go off when there is a spill. So all the time it's going to be leaking thousands of gallons and polluting our water anyway. It's guaranteed. I ask you, would you want that run through your backyard? Would you want that run through your waterways? So I ask you to focus on what's going on here. Not make it any other issue than stopping the Dakota Access Pipeline from being built on the Missouri River and polluting the water of the Lakota people. Our backs are against the wall. We got nowhere else to go. If this happens, our children are going to get sick and die. This is the final assault they're trying to make on us. And if they succeed here, they're going to assert their authority over the entire planet after this. When I was seven years old, my blood father told me a prophecy. I can't tell you the first part of it, but the second part is this. It's the unification of the Red Nations. The Lakota have been chosen to do this. My dad said, from all evil comes good, and from all good comes evil. This pipeline is evil, but the Creator is using it to bring about much good. The Chanupa was given to the Lakota, and it was never intended to stop the white man from coming. It was intended to preserve us. My dad told me, that the Lakota were told long before the white man came of their coming. But the Creator sent the Tukashlele to them, the angelic beings, to ask us not to fill the Chinupa to stop it because it was part of his greater plan. That we must accept it and go through it. So then I asked my dad, well, why did this happen then? Why did the white man come and do all these horrible things? And he said, to whom something great is given, Something great is required. We were the only people ever given the Chanupa. Would we turn from the Chanupa under the pressure of genocide, murder, violence, systematic oppression, poverty, child molestation and boarding school for generations? Or would we stay true to it? Would we walk with the Creator? Will we not abandon the pipe and not choose the ways of the invader? What's happening here is the fulfillment of that prophecy I was told when I was seven. And the Lakota have proven themselves. We never strayed from the Chanupa. We never strayed from God. And this is the beginning of our great reward. We've been chosen as the place of healing for the Red Nations. So, however, we're under great threat because of this evil that's been used to bring this great healing about. So what we need from you is prayer. Thirteen years ago, I was in ceremony with my hunka dad and a woman. And the woman prayed to the Nukashlele this, Please change the mind of this leader of the United States, George Bush, so that we don't go to war in Iraq. And the Tukashlele came and spoke to my Hunka father and said this, Tell this woman her prayer is good, but we can't answer it. There's not enough of you praying. We must pray in a collective mass to shift the balance. And the Creator will hear our prayer and stop this. But we need you to do that. So I thank you for listening to what I've said here. I wish you well, and I want God to bless you. Thank you so much. Kelami yelo, atakoyase, oh.